Secretary of State Antony Blinken will return to Israel on Friday. The stop is part of the U.S. government's push to bring peace to the region. This visit marks the sixth time the United States' top diplomat has traveled to the Middle East since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. His trip coincides with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu telling his country he has approved the new plans in Rafah and that operation is needed to eliminate Hamas. Netanyahu plans to speak with Republican senators virtually today. We're going to go ahead and bring in CBS News foreign correspondent Chris Livesay. He's there in Tel Aviv. Good to see you, Chris. So Secretary of State Blinken, he's back in the region. Netanyahu is speaking with Republican lawmakers today. Tell us how much weight the U.S. actually carries over Israel's overall decision in Rafah. Hey, Megan Lana. Well, the answer is a lot, but it's not absolute. Uh, first of all, I should mention that according to Israeli media, uh, uh, Secretary Blinken is also making a stop here in Israel, which was previously unannounced. That could be as early as tomorrow. Now, when it comes to the amount of influence that the U.S. carries, it's quite a lot. When it comes to any decision that Israel makes militarily, it's receiving a lot of U.S. aid, and the U.S. obviously has a lot of, of input uh, when it comes to that. But Israel has made it clear it is going to root out Hamas no matter what it takes with or without United States support. Now, that obviously comes with a cost because the U.S. is Israel's biggest ally. And Israel is already feeling massive isolation as a result of this war. The images coming out of Gaza, the horrific scenes we're seeing of just the humanitarian crisis and the, the hunger crisis unfolding. Uh, but Israel does not see its own security situation to be tolerable until Hamas is rooted out. So like it or not, the U.S. may have to deal with Israel going it alone. But so far, Israel is at least going through the motions of coming up with an alternative. It's going to the U.S. next week. It's going to have these talks. We'll see what comes out of them. Chris, a lot of questions about a potential timeline. Any inkling of when this operation is set to begin? Uh, it, the timeline is probably at least weeks of weeks away. That's for a number of reasons. Uh, the, the first is they haven't, Israel hasn't even made public its plan for evacuating the more than a million people who uh, reside in Rafah right now, most of whom are, are taking refuge from elsewhere in the country that's been under heavy bombardment. Rafah has been something of a safe haven. Uh, Israel has promised to come up with an evacuation plan first, but it hasn't made those plans public. Second, just the overall humanitarian crisis is, is sprawling throughout Gaza. The United States, as we speak, is rushing a temporary pier to the coast of Gaza in order to deliver more aid by sea. But even that is, is weeks, if not months away from becoming operational. And it would be quite shocking if Israel went along with this offensive without having those other humanitarian pieces in place. And uh, along the same lines of trying to put all the pieces in place, Chris, uh, I have to ask, what's the latest in terms of hostage negotiations and the possibility that any of those people make their way back to their loved ones? So the fact that they're even having these negotiations is a positive sign. According to the latest reports, Israel has proposed a, a six-week pause in hostilities in exchange for 40 hostages. And prior to that, uh, it was really at a stalemate because uh, Hamas was insisting on a permanent ceasefire and Israel pulling out of the Gaza Strip completely, essentially demanding that Israel wave the white flag. Uh, and Israel wasn't about to do that. Now the fact that they're actually having these talks is a good sign. Nevertheless, we have been here before in the five months since this war began, and the, those dreams have come crashing down before. So a lot of people here are, are a bit uh, cynical at this point. Absolutely. Chris Libsay, thank you so much.